Francisco. Hi, I'm Jorge Antonio Vallejos, and you're watching BlackCoffeePoet.com. We're doing a special week here around the missing and murdered Aboriginal women in Turtle Island, on Turtle Island, and I've got a very special guest today, author and writer Eden Robinson. Hi, I'm Hyla and Helsick. Awesome. <laughs> I've been having problems with the pronunciation for the last two minutes. Okay, so um, Eden, um, you know it's a it's a it's a day right now to remember and honor the missing and murdered Aboriginal women here in Turtle Island. Uh, what does this day mean for you? With all the protests happening across Canada, the rallies, and uh, people just speaking out saying, "Hey, you know we matter, and our women matter." Yes. What does this mean to you? Uh, it's it's wonderful. Um, usually, w well, when I was growing up, um, if if an Aboriginal woman went missing, there wasn't a big outcry. The family would would work by themselves to try to find her, but no one else would. So you wouldn't get a lot of support from any of the authorities. You wouldn't get support from any community outside of your own. So you, you always felt like um, uh, the person who went missing didn't matter as much as, as other people who went missing did. Um, so it was a very lonely and isolated feeling. Yeah. Uh, so to have so many people come out and support um, Aboriginal women and their families and their friends and their children uh, is, is wonderful. Okay. Um, you know, you're from an area that's greatly affected in mm -hmm. terms of this, what we will say um, is an epidemic, the way it's happening, you know. Almost a thousand women have been yeah. missing and murdered that we know of in the last 20 years. But uh, as you know, like, um, you know better than anybody, you are originally from here. You're an Aboriginal woman, you're First yeah. Nation. So with colonization, this this is nothing new. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can you talk about your area uh, and the problems? Well, I'm from Kitimat. Kitimat is a small town on the central coast of British Columbia. Near Kitimat is uh, Highway uh, Highway 17, which is nicknamed the Highway of Tears, because so many women have disappeared along it. And it's been happening for over 20 years. Uh, the first suspected cases uh, range all along the highway and down into Vancouver. Uh, it didn't really get a lot of attention until after the Picton Farm in uh, Vancouver when a lot of the women from the downtown east side were found murdered on the Picton Farm. And there was an, uh, a, a sense of community outrage that so many women had to be murdered before there was any attention drawn to it. And uh, they suspected Picton for a long time, but didn't have the evidence and uh, to to convict. And some people were suspecting that there wasn't a lot of um, uh, if if there if he'd been murdering people from a different ethnic background or from a different social economic background, then it would have he would have been brought to justice a lot sooner. Um, so a lot of those issues uh, brought to light the Highway of Tears. And I remember uh, there was a, a young girl from Prince George uh, who went missing. She was 14 years old. She went to the mall with her brothers and disappeared. And after she died, uh, uh, Prince, Prince George had a lot of rallies and a symposium and a conference. And they came up with um, uh, what they thought the problem was and what they thought some of the solutions could be. And uh, that was that was when a lot of activism happened. Since then, it's 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 kind of it's on a pendulum. It's gone quiet. It's gone hot. It's gone quiet. It's gone hot. But um, the they have a task force. They have um, uh, they have some initiatives set up because uh, a lot of the problems were poverty based. Um, a lot of the smaller communities up in the north are very poor, and the vulnerable people. Um, the women, the younger women, are hitchhiking to get to different locations for for work, for uh, to visit family, to to go have some fun with friends, and uh, while they're hitchhiking, they they disappear. Mm. Yeah. Okay, 
Yeah, this is happening all across Canada. Um, BC uh, gets a lot of the attention on the Highway of Tears, um, and it's, it's valid. They, they need the attention, but it's happening all across Canada. It's happening in the United States as well. There was an article, a very well-written, important article in Color Lines, which is an American magazine, about two years ago. Again, same thing happening, you know, white men going onto a reserve, uh, and you know, be acting violently with native women, leaving the reserve, and they're scot free. But uh, it's not just violence on reserves; it's all over the United States, all over Canada. And when you when you talk about indigenous women, we're talking about this whole hemisphere as well. Mm -hmm. um, Guatemala has major issues. Mexico has major issues everywhere. But uh, we are focusing on Canada today. This is February 14th, and while most people are going to be remembering um, a romantic loved one, we're here to remember a lot of women that uh, should still be here and are not because um, of violence at the hands of another. So, you know, what? it's been 40 years since uh, one of the most famous cases, Helen Betty Osborne. In November, it will be 40 years, and um, Helen Betty Osborne was murdered by four white men, and it took 16 years for them to even go to trial. One got full immunity, um, all kinds of stuff. You know, um, what has changed in 40 years, apart from activists and Aboriginal people and allies saying something, and what needs to change? Uh, the, the needs to change, there's a, a certain level of apathy that's still out there. There's a certain level of, well, you know, we probably can't do anything, we probably can't change anything, and these people aren't really that important. Why should we spend a lot of resources uh, protecting them or, or doing anything about their murders? Um, th to some degree, that's still there. That's, that's why the women are still disappearing. Uh, the things that have changed are that um, it's actually getting attention, whereas uh, even 10 years ago that wasn't the case. I remember the, the first coverage of the missing women in the downtown east side. It was usually the, the smaller independent magazines and newspapers that were, that were following the story. It wasn't picked up anywhere else. Uh, now you have a lot more coverage. There's a lot more awareness of it, but it's, it's still pretty... Um, there's there's, unless you've, your community has been affected um, the, the way our communities in the North have. Um, uh, in Morristown, uh, three of the women were from Morristown. It's a very small, tight-knit community. And these women had families, they had children, they had loved ones, they had mothers, they had fathers, you know, and they're, they're in deep mourning. Um, and it, it was hard to watch a lot of them go through it because for a long time they were going through it themselves. Um, and there wasn't a lot of support for them. There weren't a lot of uh, people in authority who were listening to them or to their uh, cries for justice or, or even for just closure, just to know where their loved ones were. Mm -hmm. uh, so more people are listening, more people are trying to do things. Um, it's not perfect, but it's improving very, very slowly. <laughs> okay. So what, what can you recommend that uh, uh, men do and, uh, and allies do? Um, we've got one minute left to count the person. <laughs> <laughs> Leela Gilday, Calling All Where. She has an awesome song and uh, uh, her website. She just, yeah, that, if, if I could sum up uh, that, that would be what I would recommend. Okay. Yeah, she's, Please. she's a native singer. And, awesome. Uh, yeah. Leela Gilday. Okay. okay. Please stay tuned for the rest of the week. We've got a review of uh, Conspiracy of Silence. We have an interview with Robin Bourgeois. We've got poetry on the Friday. Please sign up to the magazine on the slot right here. Enter your email and uh, be tuned in for more important weeks such as this. Thank you very much, Eden Robinson. Thank you. And thank you to the camera person, Zainab Abadahi.